Hello and welcome to Shubhra Ranjan IAS. Today we are here with our weekly history segment of newspaper and editorial analysis. So in this section we are going to talk about Dokra metal craft which was recently in news. Then we'll talk about the legal protection which is available to ancient monuments and archaeological sites in India and why it is very important. Uh, after that we'll move on to discuss two important sites from Gujarat, Vadnagar and uh, Morera Sun Temple which has been uh, listed in the tentative UNESCO World Heritage Site list. And then we will talk about our uh, section A Peek into the Past where I have included another medallion from Barhut. We will look uh, at that particular medallion. So starting with our first news which is about Dokra metal craft. Why was it in news? Because Lal Bazar is becoming a hub for the famous Dokra metal craft. So uh, it was there in the Hindu and uh, when we are talking about this particular metal craft we are going to look at the craft and the important places where it is produced. So if you talk about the important places where it is produced so one would be Bikna in Bankura and Daryapur in Vardhaman. So this is a technique this is one of the uh, metal crafts which has been uh, actually created by this particular technique. So it is a metal craft which is here in India for around 5000 years. So it is very important cultural legacy of ours. So you should understand how it is prepared. So it is prepared by lost and wax technique. What is this technique and how is it prepared? See, there is a mold which is created by wax and then molted uh, metals are poured on that and when it has settled down, the wax is finally melted. Uh, so, uh, it is being melted down and drained away and that is how these kind of metal crafts are being created. So, loss, when it comes to log, uh, loss and wax, uh, wax and loss technique, you should also know that uh, the famous Chola bronzes were also being created by this particular method only, lost and wax technique. Uh, when we are talking about Dokra metal craft, so a lot of elephants, horses, birds, decorative items like bowls, these things are created uh, and uh, it is very much in demand these days and that is why it was in news. So you should know about this particular cultural legacy of ours. Important places we have talked about. Coming to the next news which was again there in the Hindu, uh, it is about uh, the uh, protection that is being offered to our uh, archaeological heritage. So why was it in news? According to the Ministry of Culture, Uttar Pradesh has the largest number of centrally protected monuments which have been encroached upon closely followed by Tamil Nadu. So if you remember in one of our uh, sessions, we had talked about the ancient monuments and archaeological sites and remain uh, remains act 1958. So what was there uh, in this act. So this act provides protection to our heritage sites, be it monuments, be it archaeological sites, be it sculptures. So these sites are protected by this act. Uh, encroachment cannot be done on these particular sites which are of historical importance. And who looks over it? ASI, we had discussed it, Archaeological Survey of India. So it was there. Now what happened in 2010 that an amendment was passed and what was the amendment? amendment all about. See, despite of this act being in place, what was happening that people were illegally encroaching upon the sites which were of historical importance to India. Even if you go today and look around these particular sites, you will find that in the vicinity of a particular site, people are living there, people are uh, drying their clothes, people have opened up shops and it is a very uh, problematic reality of our times. So, what happened in 2010 that an amendment was done and according to this amendment you cannot make any construction uh, around 100 meters of the area of these protected monuments. So what would happen that see 
if there is this heritage so 100 meter area in the 100 meter area you cannot do any kind of construction work be it private or be it public so this is banned then there was a regulated area of 200 meters and in these 200 meters if you want to do any kind of construction you need the permission of the government so now what is being talked about that this ban should be removed and why it is very problematic if you look Look at the condition of these monuments many of the monuments are already in ruin and if we are going to remove this ban the problem is that this heritage area it is going to be uh, demolished or uh, detracted in a way so it is problematic from cultural as well as environmental point of view if we talk about the protection and preservation of our heritage sites so this is the whole uh, problem that is being talked about whether development should come at the cost of our cultural legacy and here see in india when we are talking about development, when we are talking about making money, you can say tourism industry can be tapped into and these heritage sites can be protected, can be conserved and in this way also we can reach the developmental goal uh, there. So this is something that uh, you should know that what was the amendment all about and why it is in news because again these people, again there is a proposed amendment that this ban should be removed. So this was the news all about now coming to the third news about Vardnagar and Modhera Sun Temple why was it in news Gujarat's Vardnagar and Modhera Sun Temple are on tentative UNESCO World Heritage Site list so these are the two sites which are on the tentative list so what happens when any area has to be uh, considered or has to be declared as UNESCO World Heritage Site what is the procedure it has to be on the tentative list for one year then it will be considered for the final nomination and it will be sent to World Heritage Center for uh, consideration into the permanent inclusion in UNESCO World Heritage Site list so we have included these two areas Vardnagar and Modhera Sun Temple why have we done it why has the government done it that is something that you should know so if we talk about the city of Vardnagar see both of these sites are from Gujarat so if we talk about the city of Vardnagar what is very important there that it has an uninterrupted history of 2700 years when I say uninterrupted history what do I mean that see if you talk about Kalibangan you must have read it in your um, Harappan civilization section of GS1 paper so if you talk about Kalibangan or if you talk about Harappa if you talk about Mohenjo Daro many of these cities were abandoned after a point of time and then people again came there and repopulated the city when we talk about Vardnagar it is like um, the city of Mathura or the city of Banaras it was never abandoned so it gives it an outstanding universal value so when we are considering cities or sites for inclusion in UNESCO World Heritage Site, the important thing to remember is that it should be of universal uh, it should, it should be of outstanding universal value and it should be of either natural importance or cultural importance or both. So this site is very important in that regard first of all because of the uninterrupted uh, history which is of 2700 years it is known as a living city uh, there are different names with which the city has been associated for example Vridhnagar, Anandpur, Anantpur, Nagar so it has also been mentioned in Puranas so when we are talking about the development of a city in this particular city as an urban space it has a lot of fortification, torrents, temples wells as well as buddhist site it is a city which is also associated with buddhism so there is a monastery that has been excavated here uh, if you remember the chinese uh, traveler wen sang he has also mentioned this particular city in his records and he has used the name anandpur so from that also you can see the cultural legacy of the city also it has been associated with different cultural layers so that is also something which is very important the city is a living city partially because of its excellent water management system also again when we are talking about this city it is very important from the perspective of being a trade center so it is in Gujarat 
when we are talking about in Gujarat, the city, when it is located here, it also worked as a connecting point between central India to northwest frontier provinces in Sindh. So, this is a very important trade route you must be knowing. So, it served as a very important center that way also. It also connected itself to the ports which were there in Gujarat. So, port because a maritime trade was very important and it, it was also connected to the ports there and there has been various uh, uh, historical references to that. We have found a lot of archaeological remains. Uh, by which it can be claimed. So, there is this Roman connection. So, there is one clay on which a printing technique can be found which is related to Roman Empire. So, that is something which is important to remember. Then there is a gold coin which associates its association with Egypt. So, all these things have been cited by ASI. Then another very important thing to remember about this particular city is that the Toran that has Kirti Torans that have been found and it is from 12th century Solanki era and uh, th those Torans have been made by red and yellow sandstone and that is also something which is very unique to this particular city. So, you should remember its importance as an urban space, as a trade center, as a cultural center and that is something which makes it apt to be included in the tentative list. Now, coming to Mudhera Sun Temple, again it is a Sun Temple in, uh, situated in Gujarat uh, state of our country. So, when we are talking about, this is the photograph of Mudhera Sun Temple. So, when we are talking about Mudhera Sun Temple, it was built by Bhim, one of Chalukya dynasty uh, uh, in uh, 1026 to 27 CE. This is something that you should know. It is made in Mahagurjara style. It is one of the styles which is very prominent in this particular area. So, it is made in Mahagurujara style. That is something that you should know. Coming to the actually uh, plan of this particular temple. So, you should know that there is one good mandap. In this, there is Garbhagriha. This would be Garbhagriha where the deity sun, it is a sun temple, deity sun is actually uh, situated there in the Garbhagriha. So, on the occasion of equinox, the first rays of sun fall upon this particular deity which is sun. So, this is the Gudha Manda, this is the Garbhagriha and here there is Sabha Manda, you can say, Sab Sabha Manda is there and then here there is this particular Kund. So, the Kund which is there, Kund is known as Rama Kund today. Initially, it was known as Surya Kund. So, this is the plan of this particular uh, temple and the Kund which is there, it can be considered one of the grandest temple tanks in India which makes it very important. There are stairways leading to the proper tank here and it is very much ornamented. There is a uh, smaller stylistic temples which have been created there. Uh, there are a lot of carved walls uh, which are there, carved walls, carved pillars which are there which makes this temple very beautiful and unique. This Paridakshina path is there. When we are talking about the carvings of different deities, so Surya is obviously there, it is a Surya temple. Then there is the images of Brahma, images of Vishnu, Nagas, all these uh, cults, all these deities and cults are represented. When you, you see the representation of Nagas in a particular temple, that shows the assimilation of Nag cult or Yaksha cult into Hinduism. So, that can be representative of that. Uh, you will see on the walls of this particular temple stories which are depicted from Ramayan. So, again, this is one thing which is very common when we are talking about temple architecture in India, be it in Hoysaleswar or in this temple also, you will see that stories from Ramayan and Mahabharat that have been carved on the temple walls. So, here we find stories from Ramayan. So, that is something which is very important when it comes to this particular temple. You should know that the torrents which were there, most of them have been damaged. So, this is something which is about uh, this particular Mudhera temple which you should know and it has been included in the tentative list of UNESCO World Heritage Site.
Now coming to our uh, next section which we had introduced a peek into the past. Here I have included a medallion from Barhut again. Uh, in the last section also we discussed uh, Bhagavato Ukranti which was the descent of Buddha. So that was there and this particular story, this particular, so this is something which is known as medallion. This is known as medallion and here we are talking about Mahakapi Jatak. So Jatak stories, I am assuming that you know that Jatak stories are a collection of Buddha's previous birth. There are around 300 stories which has been included in Jatakas. So when we are talking about Buddha's previous birth, it is as Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva what is the concept of Bodhisattva? A Bodhisattva is a person who is holding his own Nirvana to make other people achieve that goal. So here Buddha Buddha is born as a kapi. Kapi means monkey. So this is Mahakapi Jatak. What is the basic story of Mahakapi Jatak is that uh, Buddha was living, so uh, the river Ganges is there and Buddha is living on the bank uh, with uh, around 80,000 monkeys which are there. So that is his tribe and Buddha is the leader which is uh, in that birth as Bodhisattva. So what is happening that these people are living there and they are eating the fruit of that mango tree. There is a king from Banaras, Brihadratha. He wanted the uh, fruits of that particular tree and for that he wanted to kill these animals. Now what will happen that Buddha who is there as Bodhisattva Kapi, he is forming himself as a bridge. So here you can say that, uh, see there is this fish, three fish is represented there that represents that this is a river and he is forming himself as a bridge. So what will happen that these monkeys can actually climb upon him and they can move to the other side so that they will not be killed. So here what will happen, you must have heard the story of Devadatta and Siddhartha. So Devadatta was his cousin who was an evil cousin, he wanted to harm him and the whole story is there. Here also in Jatak stories also Devadatta is the evil monkey. So he thought that it would be a very important, it is a very interesting opportunity to kill Mahakapi Bodhisattva. So he will uh, climb upon his back and Buddha will be injured and then he will be saved by these soldiers because they are very much influenced by his sacrifice, how he is making these monkeys climb to the other side so that their lives can be saved and finally he gives sermon to the king how to be a good king to your people. So here you see the story is depicted in a medallion. This is a basic story. Here I had told you that all in Baru there are a lot of inscriptions. We had talked about the label inscriptions. Here, this is the term Danam. Danam, it is uh, written in Brahmi. So that means it is a donative inscription. That is donative money. That uh, and, uh, this medallion has been donated by somebody. So it is a donative inscription. And in this also it has been mentioned that it is the story of Mahagapi Jatak. So donative as well as label inscription. Here see this, the way it has been uh, depicted here, this is known as synoptic view of depiction of a story, synoptic view. Okay, so here see there is this tree, there are a lot of monkeys who are there and there you can see this is the river and here three fish is depicted that means it is a river. So it is a way of representing a particular river. He, here this is Buddha, he is making himself as a creeper so that these people can cross the bridge. Now, this particular monkey who would be Devadatta, so he tries to kill Buddha, he jumped on his back and here you can say, see there are few people, there are two people who are holding a blanket so that Buddha will fall upon this and he will not die. So, that is the way of depicting it. Now, here when he uh, has been taken care of by these soldiers and the king himself. So see, there is this crown by which you can uh, assume that he is the king of Brihadratha. So he is sitting here and see, he this stool is actually higher than the king's. That shows that the king himself is in an awe of Bodhisattva monkey. So here Bodhisattva Kapi is giving him sermon on how to be a good leader 
or how to be a good king so that is the basic story of mahakapi jatak which has been depicted here in this particular medallion there are uh, there are depictions of this particular mahakapi jatak stories in sanchi also we'll try to bring that for you probably in uh, the next section so this was the news uh, this year uh, this uh, week there was not a lot of news related to history we tried to cover it uh, whatever was there and then we looked at this particular medallion from barhut uh, i hope your studies are going well keep reading keep revising we'll meet next week thank you